Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. Bloodshed is continuing in Iraq as violence has claimed the lives of dozens of people on Tuesday alone. Fighting and missile strikes killed as many as 30 people in the city of Ramadi. According to the website Iraq Body Count, 251 civilians have been killed in Iraq so far in January alone. Meanwhile, the United States has accelerated the delivery of missiles and other missile equipment, including drones, to support the Iraqi military. We're accelerating our foreign military sales deliveries and are looking to provide an additional shipment of Hellfire missiles as early as this spring. These missiles are one small element of that holistic stra excuse me, strategy, but they have been proven effective at denying ISIL the safe haven zones that it has sought to establish in western Iraq. The United States maintains a strong relationship and commitment uh, with and to uh, the government of Iraq, and we remain in close contact uh, both from Washington and uh, our embassy in Baghdad with Iraq's political leaders about how we can continue to support the government's efforts to defeat uh, al-Qaeda, uh, what's known now as uh, the Islamic State of Iraq and, and the Levant, which is the al-Qaeda uh, umbrella group there. Now joining us to discuss this is Rayed Jarrar. He's an Arab American blogger, political analyst based in Washington, D.C. He was born in Baghdad and immigrated to the U.S. after the 2003 invasion. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So can you start off by giving us an update about the latest situation? We know dozens of people, uh, some reports indicate as many as 100 people were killed on Tuesday alone in Iraq. The situation is uh, at its worst in Iraq in the last few weeks. Uh, I am one of the people who were uh, very uh, careful in describing the situation in Iraq as a civil war. Uh, never used the word before. Uh, I usually refer to it as a civil conflict. Uh, unfortunately, I think the last three weeks uh, can be described as a full-on civil war. Uh, there is a full-on sectarian civil war uh, between a central government uh, that is uh, mainly a Shiite uh, government at this stage and a popular uprising uh, in the Sunni areas in Iraq. And it's uh, the worst uh, conflict that the uh, country has uh, witnessed when it comes to uh, domestic conflict, Iraqis against Iraqis, uh, since 2003. And talk about the, the groups that are participating. We know the Iraqi military has, has partnered with some um, Sunni tribes uh, to fight this group called the Islamic State of Iraq, who also have forces in Syria as well. So this is also growing into a regional conflict as well. We've also heard some reports that these groups are getting backing from Saudi Arabia and have links to Al-Qaeda as well. But well, th this is the mainstream story. I think the real news story um, is uh, what's going on is more uh, a conflict between the Iraqi central government uh, with its uh, Shiite parties and Shiite um, militias and uh, Iraqis uh, who are uh, Sunnis who live in Ramadi and other uh, Sunni provinces. It, it has more to do with this than a fight against Al-Qaeda. Uh, I think the claims that this is a fight against Al-Qaeda uh, are uh, political attempts uh, to get uh, some uh, international support or to create a narrative uh, to support uh, the Iraqi government's actions. Things on the ground suggest uh, something else. Uh, this particular uh, uh, spike of violence can be very easily uh, tr traced back to a government uh, crackdown against a political uh, sit-in uh, in the city of Ramadi. Uh, there is a political sit-in in one of the central squares in Ramadi. Uh, it has nothing to do with Al-Qaeda. It has nothing to do with terrorism. It has uh, everything to do uh, with grassroots organizers uh, who are Sunnis uh, in Ramadi and elsewhere, uh, organizing against a central government that they see as corrupt sectarian supporting uh, a few Shiite uh, political party agendas. Uh, when the crackdown happened the last week of December, uh, there were dozens of people who were killed and injured in that square. Uh, although many people from the province threatened that if an attack happened against the peaceful demonstrators, 
there will be a violent reaction. Uh, after the attack happened, there was a violent reaction. Uh, there is an uprising by Iraqi tribal leaders and their forces against the Iraqi government force, forces and those uh, who work with the Iraqi government. Now, uh, there might be a component of you know, people who exist within this um, conflict on the margin of it who are affiliated with Al-Qaeda, but this is definitely not a conflict between a legitimate central government that is trying to fight terrorism uh, the way that the uh, al-Maliki government and the Obama administration have been portraying the violence in the last few weeks. So the U.S. Uh, has ruled out, at least officially, sending troops back into Iraq. Um, one of the hot spots has been Fallujah, where nearly 10 years ago the U.S. attacked that city with white phosphorus and other chemical weapons. Um, talk about the fact, well, talk about the role of the U.S. They haven't sent troops, but they have sent weapons. Correct. I think the U.S. involvement, uh, although the U.S. military uh, occupation uh, ended officially uh, the last week of December of 2011, uh, it's an irony that uh, in the two-year mark, uh, the two-year anniversary of the withdrawal of the U.S., uh, the U.S. is still very much involved uh, in domestic Iraqi politics. Uh, the U.S. is still taking sides in the uh, Iraqi domestic uh, political conflict and now in the Iraqi uh, civil war. Uh, the U.S. is funding uh, the Iraqi government, uh, which uh, has been accused of uh, committing mass crimes against its people. And the Iraqi government is definitely using U.S. weapons and U.S. training to attack its own people. Uh, unfortunately, the U.S. Uh, military withdrawal was not accompanied by uh, an end of a U.S. political intervention in the country. Uh, the political intervention continues, and now we see that the military intervention continues through funding the Iraqi authorities uh, and uh, supplying them with weapons and with uh, legitimacy. Uh, I think the Obama administration's official narrative uh, uh, copies that of the Iraqi government. Uh, there is no questioning of the Iraqi government's uh, agendas or real intentions behind this brutal attack against uh, Sunni uh, provinces and cities in Iraq. On the ground in Iraq, people don't really believe that this has to do with Al-Qaeda. They've been hearing the same broken record for a decade now, that we're attacking this because of Al-Qaeda, we're doing that because of Al-Qaeda. This one is a clear cut for Iraqis. There was no Al-Qaeda in that central square. There was no Al-Qaeda in another central square in the north of Iraq, where the Iraqi forces uh, attacked uh, other uh, peaceful demonstrators uh, four or five months ago, and they killed and injured hundreds. Uh, so this is from a domestic uh, perspective. When I read things on the Iraqi press uh, or uh, Iraqi TVs, no one is talking about this being a real attack against Al-Qaeda. Uh, this is definitely uh, a continuation of uh, a sectarian attack uh, against people who don't like the central government. And just to give you an, another proof that this has nothing to do with Al-Qaeda and has a lot to do with sectarian politics, uh, the day that the government's uh, crackdown happened, 42 members of the Iraqi parliament resigned. Uh, these are mostly uh, or almost every Sunni in the Iraqi uh, parliament. Why would 42 members of parliament resign if the Iraqi government is conducting an operation against Al-Qaeda? That will never happen. People hate Al-Qaeda in, in, in Iraq. They hate Al-Qaeda in Fallujah and in Ambar. There is no uh, popular support to that. But there is popular support to the grassroots activists who are sick of this central government that is among the most corrupt governments in the world, uh, among the, the most brutal governments in the region. And finally, what can people do today in America um, and around the world to support these grassroots movements that are demanding a change, a demanding an end to the violence, the escalating violence? I mean, I think, you know, the biggest support that uh, movements of change around the world and in the region and Iraq, the biggest support that they expect from the United States is to leave them alone. You know, I don't think anyone from Fallujah or Ramadi who's fighting for better futures for their kids, 
are waiting for American taxpayers or the U.S. government to send them missiles or to send them, uh, you know, more uh, helicopters or uh, drones. That's not what they need. Uh, what they need is an end to U.S. intervention in the region, an end to U.S. support of one faction against the other, uh, because that support from the U.S. is definitely prolonging uh, the internal conflicts in these countries and making it harder to achieve uh, positive social change in them. Rod Gerard, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You can follow us on Twitter, at The Real News. Tweet me questions and comments, at Jessel Noor. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.